we have been talking about the, the first strategy, but I want to add a layer because of what Mia shared, is that we learned some of this in isolation, but the application to context is really important. So the second idea is talking about having time to focus on isolation, but then having time to practice in context. And both of those are part of the work. So it's the idea of the memorable concept that I mentioned first, but the second one is relatable. You know children have favorite topics. I don't have to mention dinosaurs without everybody both smiling and groaning at the same time, because there likely is, regardless of where in the world, regardless of early age, regardless of what children are interested in, a bit of a fascination with dinosaurs. You may not know how to spell triceratops, but it's amazing how early children can say triceratops. So making it relatable is the second idea. And part of that is allowing for informational, real world, and then some opportunities to, to deal with story. So we don't just work with story and we don't just work with informational. We need to give both of them because kids will relate in different ways to different types of contexts. So when we take what we know in isolation to practice in context, it helps us deepen our understanding, but also use it in a targeted way. Part of this again goes back to what children learn and I know I can recite every one of the 47 phonics generalizations. So if you wanna talk later, that would be a very boring webinar. But at the same time, I can give a lively example like the KN where the K is silent only occurs 10 active times in the language of English and two more inactive uses. Now you can start saying, can you write down all the words that begin KN where the K is silent? Let's not go there because kids are going to try and say Kanak when they first see that word. So when I think about the kinds of things of my teaching for many years with young children is the idea that we can focus, as Mia just said, and target and give opportunities to repeat. Repetition is not boring. For some children, choice with repetition, as I mentioned first, deepens understanding. So think about how many times you've tried something. Is it a dance? Is it baking bread? Is it using almond flour for the first time, which I'm trying to learn how to use better? And everything is coming out flat instead of rising. You can give me some tips in the chat. No, I've learned that you have to increase the volume. So many, many times I have my children, the simplest practice is say it soft, then say it normal, say it loud. Whether you talk about the one hand voice no one can hear you further than one hand away from your face, the two hand voice further away from your face, or the three hand. To the early learner, this is different because each one is different. Repetition and deepening understanding. So when we think about the foundation of phonics, it is what is our, phonics is our foundation. But as we said already, it's based on oral language and it needs some independent practice. And that has to be both in context and in isolation. So reciting the 10 most active KN words, and then actually the two that are least often used, the 12 making the total. Should I learn that rule? That when KN is at the beginning of the word, the K is silent for 10 or 12 examples? No, but I need to counter that example frequently as foundational in learning to read and learning to write. So the isolation doesn't help us as much as context and isolation together. I remember rainbow writing. You all remember rainbow writing. Write it again with another color on top. Write it again. I'm such a fan of multicolored pens. You should see my desk. I'm hiding it from you because I just loved it. But when I thought about rainbow writing, we know that many children don't find that their only way of learning letters, but isn't it a fun way to concept and build on top of each other or put them in the four corners of a page or have some kind of repetition, magnetic letters even as well, or the movable parts that Seesaw offers. Then write in different sizes and places. I've already mentioned this, but it's that isolation 
and context. So one of my kids came in to kindergarten a few years ago, said, Miss Klein, Miss Klein. I said, what? Why are you so excited? He said, I found the at home. And I'm going, wonderful. I wasn't pushing to go home and find the word the. We had learned the word the as a sight word, as a spelling sequence. And he was so thrilled to tell me, he actually found it. I said, where'd you find it? He said, on the refrigerator, there was a poster that was there and it had the word the in it. And I found it. I went on a the hunt and I went, fabulous. And then different places and sizes, but also even the idea of passing the writing around. You know, can you do it again and again? It isn't just boredom by one child, but the game-like quality that takes it to context and then finds it on the refrigerator at home. What better example of context? So when we think about young children, we need to think about varying the sound and the format. Now I said, see the same sound. We also have to see the same letter. We have to see the same formation. So saying the see the sound, again, making talk visible to many children that's seeing the sound, but we're also needing to know the letter. We need to know it rapidly. We need to know it in every variant form. We need to know it everywhere we see it in a word, beginning, middle, and end. All of that practice, spaced repetition, and in variant forms in context will deepen the memory trace. Mia. All right, thank you so much. So um, we wanna share another um, lesson with you that you can use with your students to apply the strategy that Dr. Klein was just talking about, um, that practice within isolation and in context. So Phenomenal Phonics is a brand new collection built to support phonics at the word level. Repeated correct practice really helps students master spelling patterns. With each lesson, students engage in various multidimensional activities and are tasked with sorting and blending and segmenting each group of words based on the featured sound, allowing for that application and practice that Dr. Klein talked about, but while using the tools only Seesaw can offer. Uh, children can listen to words, they can use the microphone to the record and listen to their own voices and get information to support and build that independence throughout the lesson. We actually work very closely with Dr. Klein to create this collection um, that meets the needs of, of students in the classroom. And um, this is supplemental to that phonics instruction and gives that isolated practice to support uh, that small group guided reading and phonics instruction that you are doing in your classroom. So we're I'm going to actually jump in again to a phenomenal phonics lesson for the C sound. So each phenomenal phonics board practices the sound spelling through an introduction video, just similar to the one that you saw in that fun phonemes lesson with a light phonemic awareness warm up um, and song. So um, students begin here, and I'm just going to play a little bit of that song for you. <laughs> So very catchy. <laughs> so after students uh, watch that video where with that phonemic awareness and that song that reiterates the sound, then they navigate throughout the various learn activities. Um, it, those activities include reading. Um, so they're reading the words, they're sorting the words, uh, they're blending the words as you can see here. They're segmenting the words. These um, activities were designed to be creative and to be hands-on, but they're practicing the skills in the context of how those sounds are used together. Like you saw in Fun Phonemes, these activities end with a connect activity. 
and um, a connect activity. And in this one, they get to play a game with a family member or a friend to find real life examples um, and really reflect on um, everything they learned about that letter C sound. So that's going back to making the learning meaningful and relatable. Um, Fun Phonemes was created to work just like the other lesson that I showed you over the course of several days. So students revisit and they complete a portion of this lesson over multiple days. This can be done in the classroom um, as a part of small group instruction for independent practice. Um, students can use these lessons in a center or a station, or you can assign them for um, remote learning or as a homework assignment as well. But all of these activities um, that students engage in work with minimal to no materials and can be done, like I mentioned before, in any environment. And we will be sharing um, these lessons with you at the end of the um, today's session, we have three lessons um, that aren't even published yet. So you guys have access to them early. Um, so we will share that in the participant handout as well as the follow-up email.